All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me on another grey and drab uh, London afternoon. Hopefully this stream will bring some more light uh, to it. Okay, so basically, the other thing I thought about doing uh, this week, and just in time because I've got two great examples we've used, um, you know, trading, trading something in the 10 year and in the 30 year yesterday and just this morning again, fr fresh off the press in Bobble and Bund. Um, and the main thing we're basically looking at is how to use a footprint in, your, in a secondary market, a correlated market, in executing in your primary or you know the, the main market you're looking at, uh, you know, in these, uh, and in, in this case we're going to look at you know how uh, I've used uh, yesterday the footprint in the U.S. 30 year to get myself in on a trade or and get myself out of a trade in the 10 year, and then this morning when I used a uh, you know the footprint and footprint logic uh, in Bund uh, to get myself a trade in bubble. And then at the end, we're just going to finish off at actually why, what's the whole point, what's the logic of doing this and why that kind of, you know, why, why it works and why you may want to incorporate it in your own trading. So the first example uh, is yesterday on the 3rd of uh, February. Contextually, we just had, uh, you know, very strong risk on flow right in from the morning into the afternoon. Uh, this was also supported by a very strong beat uh, on the US ISM numbers, again generating more risk on flow. And on this time, you know, I was, I was waiting for the data to come out, we had a beat, uh, and then you know, I got short um, uh, the US 10 year, uh, you know, went, went a few decent ticks, and then, maybe, uh, and then just after maybe 30 seconds to a minute after the data, perhaps slightly longer, there was a comment. Uh, that came out about, you know, um, U.S.-China relations. The comment involved uh, something like China wanting to ask the U.S. about more extension or, or a relaxation of the, t of the uh, trade agreements uh, signed in phase one. And there was sort of chat or murmuring about how they might renege or change, you know, ask, ask for this uh, change in, 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 in the uh, agreement. Um, and basically it just sounded bad. It was a rehash of what was said, uh, you know, earlier, but it still caused a very noticeable, um, you know, blip in the markets. And um, in that time, in the tenure, basically, there's a huge mis uh, you know, mismatch in participation. Uh, you know, we traded very heavily down based off the uh, beat in ISM, but you know, the comment came out, and suddenly everyone started piling in long. Um, and you know, there's a huge flurry on the ladder, a huge mess. Basically, you know, it's hard to figure out what was going on. The same in treasuries, the same in uh, S&P and other markets. Uh, so yeah, essentially it was a mess. And in that situation, what, we, what happened was um, uh, uh, what happened was the the data came out at three, which is which is essentially this column here of the um, of a half an hour footprint. And you know you can see how on the risk off flow we came down lower in the U.S. ten year. And then the data came out, you know, and took us and took us lower. And then once we were trading in and around this sort of um, uh, at these sort of prices, you know, I was in short. You know, it looked very good. We had, you know, a very high participation of sellers. You know, hitting the bid, taking out each price. You know, we had very, you know, very good size uh, hitting, uh, you know, this price lower. And then the um, the comment came out. Uh, you know, suggesting risk off, maybe perhaps some safe haven flow to, and then, you know, treasuries started bidding up. But in that time, we did find a bid in treasuries, but essentially we were stuck rotating, uh, you know, between these prices very fast, very aggressively. And, you know, looking at the footprint, looking at the ladder, there wasn't, you couldn't really tell which way the market wanted to go. Um, it was very unclear. Are we going to have perhaps a huge squeeze? And all the shorts here are going to have to just, you know, bail on their positions and it'll create, you know, a short squeeze. Or perhaps are we just going to ignore the headline because the headline is essentially a repeat of, uh, you, you know, uh, of what was said the previous day. Are we just going to, going to ignore it, trade a few prices higher and then just basically resume the risk, uh, risk on, uh, resume the, you know, the, the, the flow in treasuries after the ISM beat. Um, yeah, and, you know, I was stuck in this trade and I was sort of lost about what was going on, how to position, and I was short. And essentially, what I, what I ended up doing was, 
okay, you know, perhaps the footprint is uh, clear. Can we look at the uh, delta, the cumulative delta? Again, you know, you can keep a, a, a running tally of the delta on the, on the, you know, on the footprint information down here. But just to show it easier, you know, we have the beat on ISM coming in, but then the delta, you know, came back, uh, you know, we had longs coming in the market, lifting the offer, but it wasn't very clear on what was going on. There wasn't a huge, you know, in terms of a squeeze, you would want to see, you know, this, this delta picking up and, you know, just ramping higher. It didn't really happen in US tenure initially. And then again, you couldn't find much of a clue based off the footprint, the delta and, you know, the cumulative delta chart. Um, and because when you're trading these thicker, less volatile markets, it creates a bit of, um, it shows a bit of the weakness in the footprint in, this, in these situations because you don't have as much, you don't have that granularity or that sort of nuance that you get on the, on, the, on the thinner market where you can see it, you know, trade and flow and rotate uh, through a series of prices. And that interaction, that auction creates, you know, visible pattern or visible, um, shape, which, you know, I've mentioned in other streams, uh, certain shapes or flow, which you can infer of what's going to happen next. Um, and, you know, something I've experimented with before and then, you know, started using my trading is, can we find a correlated, you know, tightly correlated market, uh, which is more volatile to give us a lead, to give us slightly more nuance in that participation. And yes, in this case, it was the third year. Um, uh, so to remind you, you know, I was trading in the 10 and then I was looking at the 30 year and why the 30 year? It's a correlated market. It's, it, you know, it's on the curve. It's, uh, it's adjacent to the uh, 10 year, uh, you know, a strong move in the 30 year. It's, you know, it, it will show up in, uh, in the 10 it, it, nearly all the time. And the advantage is, is because it's thinner, it's more volatile. Again, it's easier to show, it's easier to show participant conviction uh, or alternatively, it's harder to hide participation. Imagine yourself, you know, you're trading big size. You don't want to give away of exactly what you're doing all the time. And, you know, perhaps if there's no urgency to do your business, to get your large volume done, you don't necessarily just want to come and just whack prices and then, uh, you know, get bad fills. Um, uh, and if you have a bit more time, you know, you do it more subtly. And when you have thinner markets and you have to do big size because of an emergency, you know, it's, uh, it, it shows up easier. It's harder to hide uh, in, in these sort of markets. And essentially what happened is, you know, we could see in the footprint, we were trading in and around here, just, our, you know, I remember watching this, it was right on the lows. The, the data came out, uh, the, sorry, not the data, the, the comment came out um, against the data. Uh, and we have very clear short participation, you know, higher. Th this uh, originally, this, um, this footprint, you know, was, was thinning out and building, you know, starting to build volume here. Suddenly we shifted, changed the delta very aggressively and, uh, you know, started printing higher. We came out and took out this uh, ledge here and then quickly rotated, rotated and came back up, which looks a bit more clear than the, um, the sort of the blockiness in the tenure. And this again will be, it will show up in uh, the delta. And of course you can, you know, track the delta at the bottom of the footprint chart I showed previously, uh, but you know, just to save time in, in this uh, stream, essentially, you know, if you're following the delta of how it moved higher or lower the whole day, it will just basically paint this picture for you. And you can see, um, you know, we had this, uh, strong negative delta come in off the data, quick unwind, and then we had this release. And you can see if, if you remember in the, previous, um, in the previous delta chart for the 10 year, it's nowhere near as clean or as obvious, and in fact nearly does, it, you know, essentially it peters out. There's no very obvious in, in, uh, volume that comes in and takes us one way or another. And yeah, essentially we have the uh, release in, in Delta. Um, and again, sort of finally we figure out what's going on. Finally, we have sort of understanding of what's going on in that, um, in that mess. Essentially, the, the, you know, the hand is shown. And then essentially there's bigger participation on the long side. We're basically just going to have to unwind all the shorts we got in off the data. Um, and then essentially from all of this, you can infer that basically the situation in play are 
sorry, my apologies, I meant to say trapped uh, shorts, not trapped longs. And then the market you know, will expect to auction higher uh, based off those trapped shorts uh, you know, uh, leaving. Okay, so on to the second example, uh, right from this morning. Um, again, there wasn't much perhaps data or very obvious news. It was just uh, generally more risk on uh, flow from you know, the background within the sort of the coronavirus situation. Uh, secondly, structurally, we also had uh, you know, a very obvious, decent uh, inside day in both the bubble and the bund. Uh, you know, essentially, you could just surmise that to being a range contraction um, you know, from two days ago. Um, and, you know, once I came into this morning and we sort of had this risk on flow, uh, you know, other risk markets, uh, equities were already, uh, all the equities, you know, were bidding higher, taking our highest uh, yen on lows, constantly doing it. But bonds felt a bit laggy. They weren't really, they weren't showing much uh, conviction any which way. And for me personally, in this situation, I don't want to sort of come in and say, okay, bonds going lower, just, you know, sell the low and then end up getting chopped up. I want to lean on, uh, on something slightly more for, uh, to play on to this risk on flow. Uh, so structurally what I was looking for uh, on this trade was, uh, yeah, of course, looking at so this dotted line here, 84s, is just the inside day low and we're looking for a break on the inside day low to play on the risk on theme, to sort of find a way onto this theme. And then essentially over the course of the day, you'd have sort of expected to trade within last week's valley area uh, you know, slightly further down. And the place we're going to look at in this example is how we've sort of participated in and around this area. Uh, we've tried to trade into it twice. Um, first time we failed, second time, uh, you know, we broke and then market went. However, you know, I was watching how uh, the bubble was sort of moving, you know, on the ladder, how we were participating on the footprint. And, you know, at first it was good, the, you know, correlations were kicking in well, everything on high and lows of how it should be. You know, we have decent de delta uh, building up. Um, and then, you know, we tried to trade into this, uh, into the 84s at the dotted line uh, yesterday's low. You know, you build very decent volume, try to trade through it and then rotate it back higher. And it wasn't, there was nothing you could sort of infer from the sort of the blockiness of the footprint, you know, of how I sh said about using the, the shape of the footprint to sort of give you a lead on what's happening. And again, I, I, I'm not the one to sort of want to get involved too much in this because, you know, I know I'll just be constantly trying to sell it and then once it rotates higher just to get out. Um, and then, you know, as I said here, there was very sort of sort of sticky price action. We came back, bubble was constantly just, uh, you know, trading in and around it. And so many times when it, it fails to do this, it won't punish you directly per se. But what happens is once the other markets come off, it will very quickly ramp against you. Uh, and then, yeah, you have a risk of a pre-aggressive counter rotation. Again, profile shape and participation are clear. And again, this kind of this weakness you have on the footprint and showing you uh, you know, how the market's trading when it's sort of very blocky on thicker, uh, slower markets or less volatile markets, perhaps. Now, again, uh, just to use, to look at the structure of Bunds, uh, sim a similar structure, and then we had this inside day low in Bunds at uh, 62s, um, you know, seeing what happens when the market trades there. Um, and then perhaps can we say that, when do we flip? When do we flip to give us that consistent participation to actually break 60 choose and go. And then once we do go and once we do go for the break, it'll, you know, it'll create a very high certainty that a bubble will follow and we can actually, you know, trade with it. Essentially, of course that did happen and essentially you can infer it much easier from the footprint in Bunds than you could in, in that just basically that block of footprint in, um, in the bubble. Um, you know, and, and as I talked before, you want to sort of infer the market profile logic onto a, you know, onto a footprint when you have it charted as a uh, volume profile. And, you know, as I mentioned before, you want to see how, how the interaction of the ladder creates this, these sort of patterns. So when we came in, you know, we had like, uh, you know, this slow grind up in, 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 in the bund, and we very quickly, you know, a sort of a nearly B-shape um, situation where all these people longs here had to quickly 
get out and in doing so it created a very very tempting trade where this this aggressive uh, offer lower looked like we were going to take out 60 shoes you know initially at 8 a.m but that didn't in, uh, you know that didn't happen initially and we rotated back up higher uh, you know creating more participation as we came up uh, you know building volume and so on and then what I was looking for is okay can we get back down below this this volume area and then once we did not only did we do so on very aggressive very fast volume these these people who are bidding it at the market here were no longer stepping in and absorbing you know at just above 60 choose the market sort of you know the, the the offers came in they hit the bid you know stepped it down lower and critically and, and in doing so forming a, uh, a double distribution in doing so, not only did we break from uh, this sort of this congestion here, we also started building very nice volume just as we broke and we sustained that break. And you know, once we start breaking, you can see that you know that very that shift in in, in the volume change compared to how how initially we we thinned out as we approached 60 choose. This time, we're not only remaining the same; we're actually adding um, uh, volume. And in doing so by building volume, you have acceptance under the inside day low. And then, you know, you have a very obvious, much more clear delta shift in, in the Bund uh, versus the bubble. And then, you know, you could, you could get into the bubble and have that conviction that you can, you know, hold it, get into it, perhaps add as they both, uh, they both, go, they both trade and go. Okay, so lastly, we're just going to uh, talk a bit about uh, the logic, why you'd actually want to do this, why would this work, and why it would be relevant. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's a more granularity, perhaps, to thinner markets that trade through a lot of prices. It's easier to sort of, you know, to see that profile shape. Uh, you can see much easier the shift in participation, the aggressiveness of, you know, one side or the lack of... Um, you know, as the market trades up and down. And of course, a very easy question to ask is, well, okay, fine, um, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm in the bubble, why not just watch the, uh, the just purely the ladder in Bund, right next to it? Why not just see when Bund, you know, starts offering, just get into the bubble for sure. And that's what I was doing this morning. But again, it's, it's you're missing out on a lot of, you're not letting the, you know, making the full use of the footprint in this way because your a footprint is also a good way to show the sort of the participation of you know the shift in participation and how that order flow changes over time which is perhaps harder or much harder to remember harder to visualize and when i say over time i don't mean the immediate you know you can see the flow on the ladder over the course of you know a few seconds it's sort of about how we shift over the next five minutes the next 10 minutes or over the course of the morning um, you know, and so on. And in doing so, I think it, it would be a bit um, dangerous perhaps to use two markets which may not necessarily always should be correlated with each other. The reason this works so well in, in, uh, in the bonds is because, you know, you have a curve of different maturities. Uh, you know, when you trade the 10 and the 30 and the uh, bund and the bubble, you know, they're adjacent to each other in the curve, very high correlation. And if that correlation breaks, on, for no much reason, it wouldn't take long until, uh, you know, certain participants like, you know, spread traders would come in and, you know, close that gap uh, in this situation. However, I would also recommend to experiment yourself with this kind of logic, uh, perhaps look at the S&P and NASDAQ. For example, if you trade the NASDAQ, uh, sorry, if you trade the S&P, you might infer certain auctioning activity on the footprint on the NASDAQ to clue you in on what's happening in the S&P, uh, perhaps. Uh, or perhaps if you trade uh, the Bund already as your main market or you, know, you trade different parts of the curve, look at the more volatile part of it. So if you trade Bund, perhaps look at the Buxel uh, footprint, see how the longer end moves, see how that part has been changes because it might just be more clear uh, perhaps for, for yourself in, in, in Bund. So, or, or perhaps you can find you know, other markets other than this, which may work for you, or essentially try and find a secondary high correlated market to your primary and sort of chart that footprint and then see what you can infer from, 
you know, the secondary market footprint for your primary market. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much. As usual, you know, there's more information on the website. On Twitter, you can get in touch with us. And, you know, on the website, we have a whole host of other videos, courses, and, um, inf you know, further information that uh, you can find. Okay, thank you very much.